God bless you. Please be seated. Good evening, everybody. We're going straight to the business of tonight. It remains my assignment by the grace of God to see that we are grounded and established in righteousness. According to Jeremiah 3 and verse 15, he says, I will give you pastors or shepherds according to my heart. And he says, they shall feed you with knowledge and understanding. Now, please pay attention. In order of priority, the assignment of a man of God with respect to a people that have been committed to him in order of priority is to number one, to help them encounter God and to grow progressively in the knowledge of the same. So your encounter with the God of the Bible and then methodically you continue to advance and progress in the knowledge of God. Prophet Jeremiah said, let not the wise man glory in his wisdom. Let not the strong man glory in his strength. Let not the rich man glory in his riches. But let him that glory at glory in this, that he understandeth and knoweth me. So the pride of the believer is derived from the depth of your knowledge. The administration of eternal life requires a gradual and continuous knowledge of God. John 17 and verse 3, Jesus himself was speaking and he said, This is eternal life, that they may know thee, the only true God, and Jesus Christ whom thou hast sent. Hallelujah. So in order of priority, the primary assignment of every man of God with respect to the growth and the development of the saints is to help them encounter God and to progressively grow in the knowledge of God. Number two, the assignment of a man of God is to be able to expose the believers to the multifaceted dimensions of the kingdom, exposing them to the keys of the kingdom, the ways of God. We'll look a bit, um, we'll look at that a bit after now. Taking away ignorance, spiritual ignorance, according to Ephesians 4 and verse 18, it says, having their understanding darkened, being alienated from the life of God through the ignorance that is in them because of the blindness of their hearts. The assignment of the God of this world primarily is to blind the minds of God's people so that they do not come into a comprehension of the ways of God. Psalms 82 and verse 5, it says, They know not, neither will they understand. They walk on in darkness and all the foundations of the earth are out of course. Verse 6 says, I have said, ye are gods, and all of you are children of the Most High, but you shall die like mere men and fall like one of these princes. And you see, when it has to do with the knowledge of the ways of God, there is exactitude to that knowledge. There is precision and exactitude to the knowledge of God. The knowledge of the ways of God. When it has to do with knowing God, we will never exhaust knowing God progressively and continually layer after layer we will keep learning him even in heaven but when it has to do with the keys of the kingdom that make for the victory and the dominion of the believer the keys are finite and you can hold them with the precision the precision of a master you can know that you have laid hold on eternal life the bible says you can lay hold on eternal life so the next assignment of a man of God in order of priority becomes to methodically, line upon line, precepts upon precepts, open God's people to the various layers, the various facets of the kingdom life and begin to guide them methodically to understand the principles that govern excellence in every one of these areas. And let me tell you, it will take a long time for believers to experientially come into a comprehension of the ways of God because transformation takes time. Are we together? And then, when believers come into that understanding, they are now taught the, the applicability of the truths that they know. 
you see it's one thing to have knowledge it's one thing to have understanding and not find the point of application of that kingdom truth to your life the goal of knowledge is that you are able to apply it in your life he said now that ye know these things happy are you if you do them are we together that is where the principle of faith now comes in because faith in one word is obedience faith is more than action action in disobedience is not faith faith must be action in obedience hallelujah so faith is obedience the blessing is not just in the knowledge the blessing is in the obedience deuteronomy chapter 28 from verse 1 and 2 it shall come to pass if thou shalt diligently hearken to the voice of the lord to do and observe all his commandments which i command thee this day that the lord thy god will set thee on high above the nations of the earth verse 2 it says and all these blessings not some all these blessings shall come on thee and overtake thee hallelujah you must be diligent to walk in keeping with the truths that are there this is where the place of empowerment comes because it is impossible for the human unassisted by the grace and the power of god to walk consistently in keeping with the conditions that make for victory this is where the engracing of the spirit now comes in are we together now very important and then when believers are empowered they go and return back with testimonies the testimonies are consolations to your christian experience because in your results listen carefully and in your testimonies jesus is glorified john 15 and verse 8 herein is my father glorified when ye bear much fruit so shall you be my disciples john 15 and verse 8 herein is my father glorified that ye bear much fruit so shall ye be my disciples 15 and verse 16 eight verses after he says ye have not um, chosen me i have chosen you and ordained you that you may go and bring forth fruit and that your fruit should remain god desires that our fruits and our results bring glory to jesus in a very definite and a very practical way ephesians chapter 3 from verse 9 and 10 in fact verse 10 it says to the intent that now unto principalities and powers in heavenly places might be made known by the church the manifold multifaceted dimensions of the wisdom of god it was to this intent that he brought paul into the fellowship of this mystery he brought Paul. Paul said in verse 3 of the same Ephesians 3, he says, How that by revelation, Ephesians 3 and verse 3, he made known unto me the mystery as I wrote a uh, four time in few words, verse 4. He says, Whereby when ye read, ye may understand my knowledge in the mystery of Christ. And then he says, Which has been in other ages had been hidden not known to the sons of men but now he had revealed it to his holy apostles and prophets even by the spirit to the intent so he revealed that mystery to paul to the end that he will use that mystery and mentor and mature the body of christ that they now being matured will be able to come on full display revealing the manifold wisdom of god if that is you say amen it means therefore that when god gives the man of god revelation access to dimensions in god he does that with the intent that that revelation should ultimately serve the body are we together isaiah 9 and verse 8 the bible says he sent a word to jacob and the word lighted upon israel he sent a word to one man jacob but the benefit and the illumination of that word was designed to reach the entire Israel. Every time believers are bankrupt of platforms for methodical spiritual growth, the side effect is that no matter how well intentioned the believers are, number one, their knowledge of God will not be accurate. And then number two, they will not be able to come into 
a point of thorough understanding of the ways of God you would find out that believers continue to shadow box around principles in hope that one of them will work hallelujah the series we're about to start is intended to bring us to a higher level of spiritual understanding so that we get to a point where we are grounded and established in the knowledge of God and in his ways and then empowered to empower others also hallelujah he says for the promise is unto you and to your children to your children's children as many as are far off even those that the Lord will call I do not believe that anyone should stay in church for a sufficient period of time and then be bankrupt of the requisite level of knowledge that empowers him or her to go and raise and empower others too it's a sad and um, tragic thing that happens in church that you have believers who sit and stay in church for many years and yet you probe into the understanding of these believers you cannot find anything that justifies the investment of their time for that long ask them what they know about God ask them what they know about prayer ask them what they know about victory ask them what they know about dominion they will largely give suggestive statements no certainty can i tell you this god desires for every believer to come to a point of confidence that comes through the certainty of scripture and in every ministry and every platform that god creates that is the assignment of the man of god to the believers to bring them to a point where their knowledge is exact and their confidence is unbendable let me show you a scripture luke chapter one we'll read the first four verses i'll ask you to read somewhere along the line for as much as many have taken in hand to set forth in order a declaration of those things which are most surely believed among us that means believers should always have a body of spiritual knowledge that are called verse one please the things that are most surely believed among us verse two it says even as they delivered them unto us which from the beginning were eyewitnesses and ministers of the word verse three now it seemed good to me also having had what perfect understanding this is a possibility with the believer you can have perfect understanding of all things as far as the ways of god is concerned perfect understanding of all things from the very first to write unto thee in order most excellent theophilus why read verse 4 together please one to read that thou mightest know the certainty of those things wherein thou hast been instructed that by the power of instruction and mentorship you come to a point where your fears and your doubts fade away you can stand with confidence knowing that this is the key that controls this spiritual outcome hallelujah praise the name of the lord and so the lord will grant us grace and help us it is your assignment to number one be serious be serious first with god and then be fair and serious enough with your destiny you know i submit to you that um i'm almost coming to the conclusion that there are certain believers who have made up their minds that they will never be serious with god no matter what you preach no matter what you say whether you cry whether you jump whether you shout it to their ears they have they have seared their hearts with hot iron and they are determined to not know god and there are others who are not determined to learn the ways of god i pray that is not you in the name of jesus there must be an intention and a determination to learn the bible speaking says that in the end times that many will not have the capacity to endure sound doctrine it takes endurance more than attentiveness it takes endurance to learn doctrine doctrine comes from the latin word doctrina it means a predefined body of spiritual information that turns a student to become something exact they gave themselves acts chapter 2 and verse 42 the bible says that they gave themselves to the apostles 
doctrine and fellowship and in breaking of bread and in prayers that was the formula that built them hallelujah it will take the word of god to build and mature any believer there's no superstition about the growth and the maturity of the believer acts chapter 20 and verse 32 and now brethren he says i commend you to god and to the word of his grace which is able so the word has an ability number one to build you up and number two to give to you an inheritance among them that are sanctified Colossians chapter 1 verse 9 it defines for us the various dimensions of growth as far as knowledge is concerned that we must press into it says I do not cease to pray for you and to desire that you be filled with number one the knowledge of his will number two all wisdom wisdom is multi-dimensional and then number three spiritual understanding while you're seated i want you to pray in one minute and say yet again open my eyes oh god open my eyes i submit to your wisdom your ways are perfect the bible says the law of the lord is perfect reviving the soul pray in one minute open my eyes shali kraski de mahashki de basu open my eyes give me understanding access to light in the name of jesus christ hallelujah striving for mastery part one striving for mastery part one the goal of this series is to move us beyond spiritual amateurism to levels in the spirit where every one of us can lay hold on eternal life where my life and your life begins to inexperience become a living epistle a a display of the wisdom the power and the grace of god striving for mastery holy holy blessed is he who comes in the name of our God? Holy, holy, blessed is He who comes in the name of our God. Hosanna, Hosanna. Blessed is he who comes in the name of our God. Hallelujah. Coincidentally, today in the body is known as Palm Sunday. And it's a celebration of the moment Jesus had a triumphant entry into Jerusalem. And the psalmist said, Ride prosperously because of truth. You don't ride just because you have a horse close to you. You ride because of truth. The courage that brings the believer into a triumphant entry in this kingdom is truth. I think I should start with a, a statement I made that I thought would, would edify us while I was in Bauchi. Um, I said how that it is possible for a student to have 14 over 100 say in a grading system that is per 100 and then another student can have 25 over 100 listen carefully another student can have 37 over 100 my question for you is who passed the most of the three students the one who had 37 with a grade system of a to f who qualified so the one who had 14 the one who had 21 the one who had 37 with respect to the grading system they all failed so just because you have improved from 14 to 20 does not mean you are there listen the bible says i think that should be is that first corinthians 8 2 or second corinthians 8 2 please look for it for me that he that 
things he knoweth anything should know that he does not know first corinthians 8 2 if any man think that he knoweth anything he knoweth not yet as he ought to my god that means relative to where i need to go to there is still much to be known are we together there are two reasons why jesus wept as far as the synoptic accounts give us number one was in john 11 and verse 35 at the grave of lazarus the bible says he wept jesus wept life wept the word wept why because lazarus was dead and the disciples testified they said oh how he loved him the second reason why jesus wept was when he stood over jerusalem he said jerusalem jerusalem if you have known even in this thy day the things that pertain unto your peace he says but now they are hidden from your eyes it takes high level spiritual illumination to be able to rise in life second timothy chapter 2 please and verse 5 for reference striving for mastery part one and if a man also strive for masteries the bible says yet is he not crowned except he strives lawfully if a man any man desires to strive for mastery the idea here is an olympian one who wants to engage in athletics that if that man wants to run so to win he says that man will never be crowned as the winner except he strives by the rules other versions will give you that expression that when a man wants to run in an olympic or an athlete that there are rules there are principles so there is a relationship between compliance to these principles and gaining mastery in the kingdom mastery in the kingdom is based on light and it's very very important that we understand this john chapter 1 and verse 14 let me share with you the last thought that i shared with them in bauchi i think this will be a great blessing to us and then we begin to establish along the lines of today's teaching genesis 1 and verse 5 not john 1 14 we're coming there genesis 1 and verse 5 please look up everyone the bible says in fact read with me one to go and god called the light day and the darkness he called night just stop there the bible says god called the light day so in god's mind what makes a day is not the passage of time what makes a day is the appearance of light that every time a man has light he has entered his day it is not the passage of time that determines whether your day will dawn. It is the excellency of the light that comes. God called the light day, but he called darkness night. So no matter what time of the day, if you are a possessor of darkness, you are in your night time. God called the light day. He called the darkness night. So if I want to turn my darkness or my night time today i don't have to wait for time to determine it there is a level of spiritual illumination that can turn my night today at the instance of light darkness can turn today you are in this beautiful auditorium right now if you had been here since morning or you don't have any access to a timepiece to know what time it is if i told you it is night now you may hardly believe is that true because the light here gives the illumination that that is equivalent to that of day can i tell you this waiting for time to turn your night to day is a total waste of time in god's mind day is equivalent to light he called the light day and the darkness he called night so as you pay attention to the things that i'll be sharing with you i pray that the light that comes from this teaching will sustain the power to turn every night today in the name of jesus christ hallelujah the first thing i want to talk about when you want to gain mastery 
you have to understand the first concept we are going to deal with here in part one wherever we stop we'll take um, from there next week is the spirituality of life please write it down this is a concept and a truth that most believers do not have that understanding of that life is spiritual in every way in fact when it has to do with the spirituality of life every religion i was studying to update my myself as to how many religions we have in the world and um as at the last time i checked it was now about four thousand two hundred religions so some 200 people have added the, you know the experience to the list four thousand two hundred religions and counting i can assure you that maybe except for a few most of these religions believe that the foundation of an individual's consciousness awareness or excellence is from the realm of the spirit based on his ability to make contact with the realm of the spirit the three principal religions that came out from abraham christianity islam judaism all three agree all three agree that everything that a man has is derived from the extent the health and the quality of his spirituality life and living is spiritual please write it down life and living is spiritual as simple as this concept is you can spend your life in total defeat and failure not knowing that life is spiritual we live in a world that celebrates intellect and that is wonderful we live in a world that celebrates science and that is wonderful but i must tell you that everyone who has done anything worthwhile on earth beyond beyond a normal human frequency would agree that they outsource their intelligence or whatever advantage they had from the realm of the spirit whether it's a scientist whether it's a religious leader the faith life is no exception life is spiritual romans chapter 1 and verse 20 life is spiritual the bible says for the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen being understood by the things that are made even his eternal power and godhead so that they are without excuse he said the invisible things from creation are now seen they are manifest by the things that are visible so the bible tells us that there are two realms and two dimensions of reality there is what we call the invisible realm take note invisible with respect to your seeing invisible does not mean unreal invisible and visible that means for every material thing that appears listen carefully there is an invisible dimension and an invisible component to it it was apostle james who was teaching us on faith and works chapter 2 and verse 26 of james and he borrowed a phenomenon to help us understand faith and works and here's what he said for as the body without the spirit is dead so faith without works is dead so any body body there means any material vessel that does not have a spirit component back in it it does not have life are we together body there does not just mean a human body no your business is a body your ministry is a body everything is a body if you cannot show the spirit that empowers it then it is dead that means the formula for destroying any body is to create a system of separating it from the spirit that backs it is that true when you want to save a man from tragedy you call it deliverance how do you save that man because the conditions that the physical conditions are bodies and there is a spirit that is giving that condition life so until you create a system of separating that body from the spirit that body or that condition will still be alive i hope you know that bodies here don't just mean material human bodies troubles are bodies there is a spirit that gives them life and for as long as that spirit has not been separated from that condition it will continue 
to to act as though it is a living thing very powerful life is spiritual second corinthians chapter 4 and verse 18 second corinthians chapter 4 and verse 18 the bible says while we look not at the things which are seen but the things which are unseen i would always bring your attention to this unseen does not mean unreal unseen does not mean unreal please look at me if i ask you to describe for me everything you can see on this stage you most likely will this will be talking about the monitors maybe the fans the flowers and so on and so forth but the bible tells us that in mount zion there are many other things you are not seeing the bible says there is within the midst of god's people an innumerable company of angels question where are they just because your physical sight cannot capture them does not mean they are not there because in the course of every service you will see operations whose origin is not physical you for instance when someone starts shouting under the anointing who touched the person you have a neighbor and you can't see anything between two of you so what is responsible for that extra phenomenon it tells you that there is more than you can see life is spiritual hebrews 11 and verse 3 hebrews 11 and verse 3 through faith the bible says we understand that the walls were framed by the word of god so that the things which are seen were not made of the things which do appear do you know what that means the mother that gave birth to anything physical is invisible now there are mothers here with children and we are able to relate with that experience because both the mother and the child are physical is that true but now imagine that a mother is invisible and you just keep seeing children you know that they come from somewhere the bible is saying that everything you see in your physical realm is only a child that the mother that gave birth to that child and continues to give birth to that child you call your physical realities is the realm of the spirit write this down please the realm of the spirit governs the physical realm very simple it will never never change the realm of the spirit governs the physical whether you are interested in being spiritual or not this is an, an information that your life depends on the realm of the spirit governs the physical realm you must understand the frailty of the physical realm with respect to the realm of the spirit that means with respect to the realm of the spirit this physical realm is very frail it is subject to change anything you see that is physical under a certain condition the realm of the spirit can superimpose upon it and change it it is both good and bad news the good news is that whatever is physical that is inconsistent with what god has said about you there is a provision by tapping into the supply of the spirit to change it the bad news is that when you are careless about any physical good thing an expression can come from the realm of the spirit and also change it to the negative an example while men slept the bible says the enemy came as a farmer and planted something you went to bed and woke up with something you can't remember going to bed with because the realm of the spirit controls the physical you must master therefore the keys that translate physical realities spiritual realities into physical realities you must master the keys that translate spiritual realities into physical manifestations you must master the keys that translate spiritual realities into physical manifestations can i tell you your your mastery when we say you are a master spiritually we define your mastery based on number one your knowledge of god but number two your depth of comprehension of the principles that are able to translate spiritual realities into their physical manifestation and that is the measure of true spiritual power i've taught you here that there is a biblical
biblical litmus test you know we like to say we are powerful every believer will say you are powerful potentially yes but experientially there are many believers who are not powerful the bible gives us an unmistakable um litmus test to know whether you are powerful or not let me show you for the sake of this teaching genesis chapter 1 let's look at verse 2 to 4 genesis chapter 1 2 to 4 gives us the ultimate test of true mastery and spiritual power are you ready the bible says and the earth was without form and void and darkness was upon the face of the deep then the bible says the spirit of god moved or hovered upon the face of the waters verse 3 and elohim said light be and there was watch this now true spiritual power is your ability to say and then it happens and god said and there was it doesn't matter what he said so like god when you rise to mastery to a point where you can say and it happens and god said and there was verse 4 and god saw what he said so you must see what you say and what you say when it appears it must be good these are the conditions the ability to say and it appears it becomes visible to your eyes and it is good that is spiritual power the ability to say and then it becomes then you will behold it because the bible says the word became flesh and then it dwelt among us that which was invisible now gained a material expression and we beheld even the glory of god as of the begotten of the father full of grace and truth so if you are able to say and then it happens and then we see it and it is good you are truly powerful the centurion had this understanding and he came to jesus and when jesus said okay let me respect you by reason of your office and come to your house he said no there is something i know for i am a man under authority having soldiers under me i say to one go and he goeth i say to one come and he cometh jesus speak the word only and jesus said i've not found this faith i've not found this construction who taught you this who taught you that the true proof of power is the ability to say and it happens that god is bringing us to points where our words are no longer empty babblings and ramblings of men that your words carry power and what drives this kind of result is understanding the spirituality of life please say after me life is spiritual that means for everything that happens in your physical world trying to deal with it spiritually is proof of amateurism immediately are you seeing that many believers never really get to grow and to be strong why because we usually will address the issues of our life primarily from a physical standpoint the bible is full of many many instances where scripture tells us that our wrestle is not against flesh and blood is that true when jesus begins to deal with things he starts from the realm of the spirit when god wants to deal with things he starts from the realm of the spirit it is only men that deal with things physically and that's why there's hardly any victory so the financial situation the spiritual situation the health situation whatever condition it is the origin is from the realm of the spirit we have the privilege of learning this from the book of job i'm not going there because of time but the book of job theologically speaking is believed to be one of the earliest books in the bible because of the context and i'm not here to do any theological argument about it but the bible tells us that there was this man called job the bible records that he feared god and eschewed evil and then he said at a certain time that the sons of god came to give accountability before the lord and satan was in their midst and there was a discussion between satan and god have you considered my servant job and satan began to speak and said does he fear you for nothing 
give me the permission to touch everything around his life and he will curse you to your face and he said all right so you go and then the bible makes a very interesting statement he said there was a certain day that means there was a date allocated for that which was finished in the realm of the spirit to find expression there was a certain day it is your assignment as a believer to keep shifting that certain day so that it never manifests in your life that the conclusions in the realm of the spirit that means everything concluded in the realm of the spirit depends on your cooperation to give it a certain day when all that discussion finished in the realm of the spirit while it was happening i'm sure job got up and was enjoying with his children not knowing that time had been allocated for something in the realm of the spirit to find expression you're not gaining mastery will allow many certain days you are not part of why should a discussion happen in the realm of the spirit and its manifestation happen in this realm i become the principal victim and yet i did not contribute to choosing the day you read the book of esther you will learn that it was through divination they chose the day that her man was to strike they didn't just select any day it was a discussion in the realm of the spirit by divination to find what day is most appropriate for this transportation to come unhindered and they chose the date life is spiritual only god knows what god has planned no wonder the bible says this is the day that the lord has made listen 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 there is a day that just happens but there is the day that the lord has made there is a day too that satan has made all of them you can make your day god can make the day prophetically satan can make the day it is up to you to stand and through intelligence make up your mind that that which satan has programmed for me will not find material expression it is up to you this is the day that the lord has made can i tell you many believers have not experienced the day that the lord has made they have experienced days that they have made they have experienced what the bible calls the day of adversary or adversity the day you experience one full day that the lord made you will know his signature will be on that day that this is the day i made and can i tell you mastery can bring you to a point where every day becomes a reflection of the day that the lord has made i will tell you the things that are captured in a day that the lord has made he taught us a few of them in what we call the lord's prayer he said when you are praying remember that a day that i make i will always give your supply per day give us this day our daily bread that means any day you don't see bread in it someone else made that day that if god makes a day bread there does not mean food bread means everything that needs to make you efficient relationships anointings there is a day that the lord has made but just because he made it does not mean you will walk in it striving for mastery this is the day that the lord has made for the bible to tell you this one is god that made it it means there are many other expressions of that day there is the one satan can make ask job job did not experience satan's days every day the day he experienced satan's own we knew that this one it wasn't god that made this day because in one day losses and pain and wickedness and tragedy my question is the day you keep entering who made it that your life becomes a plethora of defeat and pain and nothing in it that makes for kingdom come nothing in it that gives god glory the bible tells us this is the day that means see it this is the product that samsung made this is the product that apple made you can see their signature on it there are fake shoes and there are real shoes there are fake everything and the real one and when you bring it before the person who made the day he can point to you you may not even know which is fake or real but they can tell you because there is every signature of authenticity over the product of the original maker there should be something on your life on your day on your destiny we will know that this is the destiny that the lord has made 
this is the home that the lord has made this is the ministry that the lord has made this is the business that the lord has made one two keys there will be extensive keys remember we are striving for mastery so the lord is taking away everything that makes for spiritual amateurism from your life listen be determined in this series that i will lay hold of this thing once and for all i'm tired of being in a situation and not know what spiritual law to engage i just keep applying anyone that's especially what we do blood of jesus fire of the holy ghost we carry a seed we don't even know that all of these principles have their exact there is the exact role that they play hallelujah I made up my mind that I would submit myself to learning and gain understanding and gain mastery from scripture over every aspect of the kingdom life that God will grant me the grace to pursue. I still remain, to, I remain a student pushing to, towards that mark, that price of the high calling. But I can tell you, so far, I thank God for that decision. You can gain mastery. Listen to me, ladies and gentlemen. You can strive and go into perfection. Hebrews chapter 6. The Bible says, therefore, leaving these, these elementary principles of this and that, he lists six of them, foundations of the Christian faith. Hebrews 6 and verse 1. It says, therefore, leaving the principles of the doctrine of Christ, let us go on to what? Perfection. Not laying again the foundation. And he lists six of them. There are six of them that make the foundation but it says listen you can exhaust them and then go on to perfection the word perfection there is maturity stature let us go on to perfection that means i need to come to a point where my prayer works that every time i open my mouth to pray i'm not hoping it will work i can know that it works are we together imagine if the meal you plan to eat after service now the person cooking it is not sure if the food will be ready or it will be done how would you love to fellowship with that kind of person that with the hunger from service after praying and shouting you rush home and you find the person still wondering is it onion or put first what have you been doing for five hours i'm 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 really i'm not sure i just didn't want to make a careless mistake the person should not be there there are occasions that will only allow room for masters there are realms where you are not allowed to be on practice while you are there you must have done your homework the throne is not for learning no there is the cave of adulam that gives you an opportunity to do your trial and error but then when you are to get to the throne because one mistake on the throne will also be taken as law and people will pay the price for it god wants to bring us to greater levels of perfection and mastery let me give you three keys the first key that controls the pursuit for attaining unto mastery haven't understood the foundation that life is spiritual you want to translate realities from the realm of the spirit to be made manifest in this realm the first key is understanding prayer please write it down don't assume you know what I'm saying. Understanding prayer. I can tell you many people pray, but very few people understand prayer. There are many believers who cannot tell you the role that prayer has to play as far as their actualizing destiny is concerned. People just pray because you were born into a faith experience that prioritizes prayer. So when we say, open your mouth and pray, everybody is talking. We're saying all kinds of things and the results show that we are not gaining anything listen let me tell you this generally speaking this this i think um i think we'll, we'll have to look at it there's a scripture in my mind help me holy spirit haggai haggai chapter one i hope i'm right haggai chapter one please give us verse five 
every time something goes wrong in your spiritual life the bible mandates that's right that you consider your ways it means there is something wrong with your approach we are reading five six seven but let me take it slowly now therefore please go back to verse five it says thus saith the lord of hosts the reason why things don't seem to be working for you consider your approach there is something you have not understood verse six it says you have sown much look at the various conditions that necessitate you considering your ways you have sown much a lot of effort but little results it says you eat and you do not have enough insufficiency you drink but you are not filled with it ye clothe you but there is nothing warm and he that earned wages earned to put it in a bag that is full of holes look at he's describing negative conditions and he's saying consider your ways there is something wrong with your approach the outcomes are a report card that you need to strive for mastery are we together you have sown there's some little results but there's nothing much you eat but you are not satisfied there's insufficiency and then verse 7 he mandates you for the second time consider your ways everybody say the ways of god this is very very important so one of the keys is prayer james 5 and verse 16 let's discuss on prayer a bit if most believers understand the power of prayer i want to quote something here while i was studying for this series i came across a very simple quote by e.m bounds for many of you you have studied e.m bounds e.m bounds was an authority in the school of prayer and he wrote something that is very powerful i want to quote it please listen carefully he said of what infinite importance is the place of the intercessor is the place the intercessor holds in the kingdom of god is it not indeed a matter of wonder that god should give men such power it's a question he said yet there are so few who know what it is and how to take hold of its strength and pray down the blessing of god upon the world he embounds what he's trying to say is that the intercessor he's speaking with respect to intercession and he's saying that most believers do not know the kind of power god has given them in prayer and that only few have understood that if believers knew the power that was given to them in prayer how that they can rain down blessings from heaven they can convert spiritual riches and realities and give them material expressions if they truly understand prayer in mark chapter 11 and verse 24 mark chapter 11 and verse 24 therefore i say unto you what things soever ye desire when ye pray not if ye pray believe that ye receives them and ye shall have them please look up there is nobody who ever gains mastery in the kingdom mastery in converting spiritual realities into their material expression without understanding the ministry of prayer efficient prayer is taught you don't just pray you are taught to pray in luke chapter 11 i think it's luke chapter 11 from verse 1 let's look at it i hope i'm right the bible says and it came to pass that as he was praying in a certain place the he being jesus when he ceased one of the disciples said unto him lord teach us to pray as john taught his disciples everybody who prayed properly was taught to pray this was not an issue of prayerlessness like you've heard me say it was an issue of praying amiss they found out that they were dissipating a lot of energy in prayer but the corresponding result was not matching that energy and they said there's something we're doing wrong we have watched your prayer life jesus and we see the profound results that come you have gained mastery over the storms over the sea over the sick over spirits and we see you retreat to a place of prayer please teach us what you are doing because we are tired of guessing and jesus began to teach them the subject of prayer can i tell you the truth just praying arbitrarily 
it will take the mercy of God for you to gain mastery even through that approach to prayer you must be taught most believers do not understand the jurisdiction of prayer and the assignment of prayer in the believers life I cannot teach this enough I see people pray sincerely but very few people can bring forth results can I tell you you've heard me say it nobody leaves what works the reason why there is a lot of prayerlessness and struggle is that believers there's their laxity to prayer is a report card they are telling you I'm tired of faking this thing is not working it may give me a consolation of feeling spiritual but i don't understand to what end this is about if prayer really works for you you will not leave it he spake a parable luke 18 and verse 1 to the end that men ought always to pray and not to faint god never prayed as god but when he became a man he prayed because men pray now that jesus ascended to heaven as a man he still prays because all men pray i've studied the subject of prayer a bit i can tell you and my assignment when i study things is to compress them to an expression that is very useful and applicable to the general body of believers and i found out maybe more but in my experience and i believe it is consistent from scripture and with scripture that there are four major assignments of prayer in the life of the believer i want you to write it and please never forget it no matter how many times you've written it write it down prayer according to scripture has four major assignments in the life of the believer number one the first assignment of prayer in the life of the believer is for growth and transformation in order of priority this is the highest assignment of prayer in a believer's life unfortunately most people have not tapped into this possibility that you gain mastery by evolving to superior levels of yourself even in the place of prayer luke chapter 9 and verse 29 the bible says and as he prayed the fashion of his countenance was altered and his raiment was white and glistering say prayer you can grow and you can be transformed in the place of prayer i show you a believer who does not engage in prayer consistently forget about mastery you cannot gain mastery in this kingdom if you ignore prayer and if you do not understand the assignment of prayer to your life growth and transformation jude jude 1 and verse 20 the bible says but ye beloved building up yourselves on your most holy faith praying in the holy ghost prayer builds the believer prayer can turn a weak you into a strong you prayer can turn a very timid canal you into a spiritual version of yourself men ought always to pray and not to faint number two i just want to touch it quickly so that we'll move to the other one making requests and obtaining promises this is the second assignment of prayer from scripture for making requests and obtaining promises every time you want to make requests and you want to obtain promises the platform for making this happen is prayer philippians chapter 4 from verse 6 it says be anxious for nothing but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving let your requests be made known unto god making requests and obtaining promises number three very quickly the third assignment of prayer in your life is for spiritual legislation what is spiritual legislation decrees creating possibilities in the place of prayer decrees creating possibilities job 22 and verse 28 please give it to us quickly job 22 and verse 28 thou shall also decree a thing and it shall be established unto thee and the light shall shine upon your ways you shall decree a thing 
it happens in the place of prayer numbers 14 28 numbers 14 28 say unto them as truly as i live saith the lord as ye have spoken in mine ears so will i do unto you not just as as much as you desire if you speak in my ears i will do it just like you have said it making decrees obtaining promises then spiritual legislation and then number four warfare and intercession the last dimension and jurisdiction of prayer in the life of the believer is for warfare and intercession ezekiel 22 from verse 29 to 31 very quickly ezekiel 22 the people of the land have used oppression and exercised robbery and have vexed the poor and the needy yea they have oppressed the stranger wrongfully 30 and i sought for a man among them that should make up the hedge and stand in the gap before me for the land that i should not destroy it he said but i found none as a result 31 he says therefore i have poured out my indignation upon them i have consumed them with the fire of my wrath their own way i have recompensed on their head saith the lord these are the four dimensions of prayer i've done this teaching I'm, I'm i'm reminding you for this series that if you want to gain mastery in this kingdom you must understand prayer you must understand prayer men ought always to pray and not to faint and that at any point you pray you are doing one or more or all of these four things engaging in that which makes for your spiritual development obtaining promises is like cashing a check in the realm of the spirit in the place of prayer number three making decrees and establishing realities in your life number four engaging the ministry of warfare and intercession at any point you go to pray these are the things that are captured in the prayer life of a believer unfortunately please look up many believers do not pray not for transformation not as a platform to obtain requests and make petitions not even to make decrees over their lives maybe they do a bit of it in church and largely most believers do not engage in the ministry of warfare and intercession no wonder the life of many believers remain defeated in spite of the fact that they are zealous for God they love God with all their hearts but they continue to find out that nothing in their lives is a capture of the grace the wisdom the power of God you must tonight make up your mind that for to honor my desire to strive and to rise to the point of mastery I must engage the ministry of prayer as a lifestyle as a lifestyle prayer as a lifestyle not a strategy for disaster management prayer as a lifestyle for most people conditions have to provoke you to pray a negative report and you quickly come to pray and satan knowing that when he wants to attack you he will not make the thing look so bad because it will call for emergency and you go and pray so he will allow gradually gradually until your prayer life goes cold and he will attack you in one day and you will be surprised understanding prayer i believe in the power of prayer i am a product of the ministry of prayer we must submit ourselves to the ministry of prayer you must obtain grace from god i pray that you will believe the things that i'm teaching you that a believer who is determined to pray with understanding please take note with understanding i submit to you that in the body of christ there is a lot of zeal people pray and pray and even if you are god the way you see people pray you are wondering why is this person's life like this i can tell you that most of our prayer is not guided by understanding for many believers we think is the stretch and the energy invested that is equal to results it is not so most believers do not pray according to scripture 
most believers do not pray according to knowledge there is such a thing as praying amiss have you read it in scripture apostle james said it is possible for one to pray amiss he says let that man not think he will receive anything from the lord prayer that every time you bow your knees to pray do you know how much of a blessing you will be if people know that your prayer really works so when you tell them i want to pray for you they are happy there are many people if you say i want to pray for you they just laugh at you because they know that you have not even sorted the subject of prayer you don't even understand what you are saying change that narrative with determination god wants the average believer listening to me to get to a point where you don't just pray but you understand the jurisdiction and the assignment of prayer whilst you are seated in one minute i'd like you to just begin to pray and obtain grace from god you are seated inside you are seated outside obtain grace let it be from the depth of your heart father i obtain grace i obtain grace to find my prayer altar back in the name of Jesus, the Son of the Living God, someone is praying. She prande kaskade la hasibash, magata prande gede beleko siata. I obtain grace. I can pray negative things out of my life. I can pray the will of God into my life and destiny. You want to strive for mastery, you must understand prayer. Hallelujah. Listen. The Bible recommends, listen carefully. The Bible recommends an approach to prayer. The most effective dimension of prayer, second only to praying in the spirit, is praying the promises of God write it down please praying the promises of God Isaiah 41 and verse 21 the word of God as you know defines the boundary of God's commitment to the believer that means God cannot be committed to the believer outside of the provisions and the allowance of scripture let me repeat myself God cannot be committed to the believer outside of the provisions and the allowance of scripture. The word of God defines the boundary of God's commitment to the believer. It says, produce your cause, saith the Lord. Bring forth your strong reasons, saith the king of Jacob. Do you know what this means? Approach prayer like a legal system in the realm of the spirit don't just say god bless me based on what don't just say god change my life you are god that's the kind of prayer we pray lord i'm tired of this situation arise oh god based on what he says produce your cause bring forth your strong reasons that means bring my word to me in prayer the scriptural basis that commits me to move on that wise are we together so the devil is plaguing your family plaguing your life and you say god i'm tired of this situation in jesus name i assure you you reported your situation but you didn't pray what is the basis lord bless me uh -uh. what is the basis even jesus himself i've taught you this when satan came to jesus he said it is written it is written is what gives strength to your prayer it is not what you are saying that gives strength to your prayer it is saying what is written when you say what you want it is not prayer when you say what is wrong it is not prayer is when you connect what you want and what is wrong to what god has said now that is prayer Father, your word declares that though my beginning be small, my later end will greatly increase. Based on this truth, in the name of Jesus, I place a demand upon the grace that makes for advancement and increase. Now you are praying. As simple as it sounds, I can tell you many believers will keep shadow boxing and believing they are praying. 
the promises of God I've taught you here that the Word of God contains three things essentially every time you open scripture the Word of God is a capture of promises principles and prophecies every time you open your Bible you are interacting with number one the promises of God number two the principles of the kingdom number three prophecy can I tell you this if you are a leader here of a prayer group you're a leader here of any prayer platform don't just tell people pray 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 bring the scriptures that support what you are asking if not I can guarantee you you wasted your time Hezekiah turned his face to the wall he would have said God this is not fair he said remember I have worked diligently in other words remember what your word says about those who serve your house can I tell you this if you know how to bring forth your strong reason you can go to bed you will commit God and and destroy dislodge anything that is not of God in prayer I speak life I speak life you're gonna leave oh my brother my sister I speak life you are the head and not the tail you will prevail I speak life don't give up the fight for your life you shall live and not die listen to me this thing you see is a very powerful song but when you get to the place of prayer you must find what god has said otherwise you have not prayed father i bring before you your word your word declares that life and death has been set before me blessing and cursing that i have the power to choose life now in honor to your word i choose life you are making decrees it's being registered in the realm of the spirit when you are saying it demons are hearing you and there is a basis for your confidence what is written father your word declares that a thousand shall fall by my side and ten thousand by my right side that none shall harm me it is not just what is written that blesses you is what is written that you have found and you engage with understanding even in the place of prayer i found your word and i did it it was a joy and a rejoicing unto me is someone learning so your first assignment when you want to engage in prayer especially in understanding is to make sure you have the patience to bring the scriptures that begin that that become the basis of your defense and of making your petition don't just go and pray and ramble around internet has made it easy to pray efficiently if you want to pray concerning your health say for instance you can go and just google prayers concerning health different scriptures will come is your responsibility to filter it by the spirit to the two or three if you can find just two or three that may be sufficient go to the place of prayer lord i bring before you this and you are praying kailashko prandakata and while you are praying you find out that things just begin to shift and change believers please hear me if we don't teach believers the power of prayer and gaining mastery even in the place of prayer many people will stop praying they will be tired and say this thing does not work the prayer that works is the prayer that is connected to scripture the prayer that work is the prayer that is derived of the spirit outside of the ministry of the word and the spirit prayer does not work let me repeat outside of the ministry of the word and the spirit prayer does not work it just becomes a motion of dissipating energy prayer is based on what God has said prayer is based on what you want that is connected to what God has said your first assignment is to find out what he has said that relates to what you want 
now you can go to the place of prayer with understanding the bible says this is the confidence we have that when we ask anything according to his will he heareth us so it tells you there is a possibility that you will not be heard if it's not according to his will hallelujah number two what is the second principle that we need to engage if we want to strive for mastery please write this down understanding and engaging the laws and the principles of the kingdom the first is understanding prayer the second is understanding and engaging the laws and the principles of the kingdom i can spend weeks after weeks teaching this understanding and engaging the laws and the principles of the kingdom that means your mastery in this kingdom is based on the degree to which you understand and engage the laws and the principles of the kingdom remember our initial scripture that he that strives for mastery is not crowned unless he strives lawfully matthew chapter 16 and verse 19 please someone is rising to a point of mastery in the name of jesus matthew 16 19 and i will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven say the keys of the kingdom please shout it one more time say the keys of the kingdom and i will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven and whatsoever thou shalt bind on earth shall be bound in heaven whatsoever thou shalt lose on earth shall be loose in heaven now king james did not do justice to what this really means the expression is that you have a a way of seeing what has been bound in heaven then you now bind it on earth give us amplified amplified will give us a clearer picture of what the bible says now listen i will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven and whatsoever you bind declare to be improper and unlawful that's what binding is on earth must be what is already bound in heaven are you seeing now and what is already bound whatsoever you lose declare lawful on earth must be what is already loose in heaven he is saying that you have the power by access to the keys of the kingdom through knowledge you can know what has been declared from the realm of the spirit to happen in your life and with these keys you bind and lose with this key you declare lawful and you declare unlawful as far as your life is concerned the keys of the kingdom you gain mastery by holding the keys of the kingdom in luke chapter 11 and verse 52 jesus calls it the key of knowledge luke 11 and 52 he said woe unto you lawyers for ye have taken away the key of knowledge ye entered not in yourselves and them that were entering you hindered what wickedness you didn't enter into that realm of mastery through knowledge and those who now want to enter you are stopping them jesus said woe to you he cursed those who were trying to stop people from gaining exact spiritual understanding listen carefully every time any dimension of the kingdom does not seem to open up to you it means there is something wanting as far as your spiritual knowledge in that area is concerned every time any dimension of the kingdom does not seem to open up to you it means that there is no knowledge in that area or there is insufficient knowledge in that area leviticus chapter 9 and verse 6 leviticus chapter 9 and verse 6 and moses said this is the thing which the lord commanded that ye should do and the glory of the lord shall appear unto you there is what you must know that activates what you do and the bible says the glory of the lord will appear unto you believers listen to me your prayer this night should be psalm 25 from verse 4 and 5 psalm 25 from verse 4 and 5 it says show me thy ways O lord teach me thy paths verse 5 lead me in thy truth and teach me 
for thou art the god of my salvation on thee do i wait all day he said teach me open my eyes so god to see take away this age-long ignorance in my life i want to gain mastery to knowledge i'm tired of being afraid going out in the morning and wondering if i'll come back i must fortify myself with knowledge i'm tired of being afraid because of what is happening around the economy i can rise through mastery and gain knowledge of the laws of the kingdom most of us know that moses saw the glory of god but i will tell you the first thing moses asked for was not the glory of god exodus chapter 33 there were two requests that moses made the first was in verse 13 and the second was in verse 18 please let's look at it quickly now therefore exodus 33 13 i pray thee if i have found grace in your sight he says show me now thy way show me your way was his first request then you go to verse 18 and he now prays a second request and he said i beseech thee show me your glory there is a relationship between his ways and his glory show me your way show me your glory so the bible says he made his, made his ways known to moses but to israel they only saw his acts the results without gaining mastery on how to reproduce them hallelujah listen to me ladies and gentlemen when i found this truth i made up my mind that i was going to learn the laws of the kingdom no matter how many I will search for them one by one by one by one by one until I gain mastery. I will study and restudy and restudy until my life becomes a capture of these principles. Most of you have not mastered the laws of the kingdom. I submit to you. And I submit to you that it's not as easy as it sounds. It takes a lot of dedication and intention to say i'm not going to live my life shadow boxing i will learn these principles every facet of your life has the ways of god that control it finances your health longevity ministry influence there are laws of the kingdom please pay attention you see we live in very troubling times right now and so many people are already troubled and perplexed wondering what will become of my life your immunity in the days that we live is the fortification that the knowledge of these laws provide for you these laws can surround and secure you like chariots you can know of a truth that you will stand the test of time because these laws are backed up by god's own integrity hear what i'm telling you the spirit of death will look for everybody including you i don't mean to scare you but it is the truth if you do not know the ways of god to keep yourself alive you will be surprised thinking you will not die till you die the spirit of poverty will look for everybody including you even Jesus said, Satan cometh to me, but he, does, he did not find anything. But he came. Are we together? In this kingdom, our defense is based on the power of the laws of the kingdom that we understand and we engage. For tonight, I will take two of these spiritual laws. Listen carefully and then we'll pray. We'll continue next week. I hope someone is learning. God of heaven. These laws are so powerful and irrefutable that if you hang on to these laws and you learn these principles, ladies and gentlemen your life will be a surprise even to you are we together the first law is the law i call it the sacrifice of total surrender just write it down the sacrifice 
of total surrender first corinthians 5 14 and 15 the sacrifice of total surrender second corinthians 5 14 and 15 please give it to us the sacrifice of total surrender it says for the love of christ constrained us because we thus judge that if one died for all then we're all dead verse 15 please look up it says and that he died for all that they which live should not henceforth live unto themselves but unto him which died for them and rose again the sacrifice of total surrender it all belongs to you oh, oh, oh it all belongs to you it all belongs to you oh, oh, oh. matthew chapter 16 and verse 25 this is one of the most fundamental principles for the making of champions in the kingdom this law is a sacrifice it will take everything from you but it will give you everything you want to gain mastery in the kingdom learn the ways of god for whosoever will save his life what will happen to him you will lose it and whosoever will lose his life for my sake that person will find it let me tell you this you are not ready to do business with god until you die to yourself there are two things you have to conquer sin and self if you conquer sin you are still not free it has to be sin and self what an unbeliever needs to conquer is sin what a believer needs to conquer is self both must die for you to rise except a corn of wheat falls to the ground and dies it abides alone i want to show you a very powerful but neglected spiritual law for as long as god is still something you use to make a good life for as long as god is still a deity that you use to be a champion you use him to get prosperity you use him to get this forget about certain levels of mastery not with power not with wisdom if it is the god of the bible that you want to see him stronger mighty in your life it must be the law of complete perfect unassuming surrender another word for it is death i know you don't like what i'm teaching you but please hear me if you are striving for mastery you have to obtain grace from god die to your desires die to your feelings die to whatever it is anything that is not the christ i have been crucified with christ nevertheless i live there are many people who want to gain mastery over the anointing they just see wonderful things happen they want anointings they, no you have to be dead god does not trust you when you are alive to yourself your tendencies the variables are too many when you are dead he can give you money because if you give it if you keep one million on a dead man's body you come and meet it there but if somebody is alive even if he's sick and you keep one million there you will come and find seven hundred and fifty thousand he didn't go out yet the money left the tendencies of men are we together <laughs> let me tell you this there are many believers that take god for granted they think god just place abracadabra they pray all kinds of prayers they want high level power they want this level of grace they want influence and the price of death is a price they are unwilling to pay i tell you sincerely behind every strange dimension of mastery and grace is blood dripping on that altar the price for life i have taught you is death 
the size of God is so heavy if you carry him alive in yourself it will kill you listen to me many of you here desire higher levels of grace you want to see God use you so mightily you know what it means to die to yourself it means there is nothing and no one that will ever have the ability to replace God in your life to die does not mean to throw away your plans it means to demote them to a point that God stands at the epicenter of your life lovest thou me more than this many believers do not know let me tell you if you like fast for one year if you like pray every day for the rest of your life if you like do whatever you do if you do not cross the gate of death forget about mastery and power with god when god comes to meet you he would demote everything that is him let me tell you how god demotes it he does not demote it by asking it to go down he will allow it to fail you one by one till you are left with nothing and you will come and say god i thought it's a job i thought it's this one how many of you can give up everything for jesus as you are sitting i know you will easily lift your hand and say me and i tell you don't be careless in lifting your hands because he will come to you it's a very difficult law that you need the grace of god to keep because remember you've spent your life building your reputation you've spent your life fine-tuning your ambition and here comes the king of glory pushing everything and wanting to take that place it's as if you don't have a life again lord you want to just come and damage my life and my self-worth and he tells you i don't kill i only kill to resurrect i give you another body a life of beauty and glory help those under the anointing you want to see the power of god you want to see the grace of god forget all these things i'm i know what i'm saying you package seed offering come and drop it it will not impact that realm on you our 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 generation just believes that money does everything just squeeze an envelope and drop it and you want to drop a realm of power that only death death can take you no sir there is a place for those things but that is not it total surrender total surrender that is the price your prayer now finds value your word study now finds value when that surrender is in place it's a sacrifice i beseech thee brethren by the mercies of god that you offer your bodies unto god a living sacrifice holy and acceptable unto god he calls it your reasonable act of worship do you know what it means to be surrendered you lose the ability to tell god no to be totally surrendered means you have killed the option of no forever whatever you want my answer is yes whatever you say no more argument with you you are final authority in all things abraham take now thy son thy only son and abraham carry the son to go even jesus himself that was the law that he engaged he came to the earth in obedience to the father even when he didn't the bible did not hide the fact that jesus himself didn't want to die go and read your bible in gethsemane the bible tells us his prayer content father if it be thy will jesus shift this cup away from me but he said nevertheless not my will that is the language of men who have died lord truly this is what i've desired but nevertheless not my will not my will man of god not my will businessman not my will all this our intelligence where we push god out of our lives and say get out of the way god you don't know i am a nigerian we keep crash landing because we don't allow the wisdom of god to take precedence nevertheless not my will 
I will keep telling you this. I love you so much with all my heart, but if the God of heaven will ask me to close Koinonia now, I stand before the God of heaven to tell you that this will probably be the last service. That's it. Don't say you love him more. He will test it. More than what? More than what? Is someone learning now? You want to strive for mastery? You have to get to a point where your mind is spiritually minded. Spiritually minded. Lord, if it is for you, there is nothing I will not do. For your glory, I will do anything just to see you, to behold you as my king. For your glory, Lord, I will do anything just to see you, to behold you as my King. I want to be where you are, got to be where you are. Listen, can I tell you? There is nobody sitting here or standing here including the man speaking to you who has the power to give your all no you only have the power to give god access to and to be enthroned above it nobody has the power to give everything you can only give god access to take everything believe me there are things that are too precious in your life they cannot go you just have to give him access and say lord i don't even know what i'm doing but you must be my god ah. hmm. gotta be where you are gotta be where you are i wanna be where you are you see let me tell you believers hear me when you get to this realm where nothing else matters to you anything that comes close to god has already failed because god is in a position jealously guarded god says you've done this for me i know the things you should want and look for and since you have prioritized me you will begin to see things you did not even pray for look let me tell you fearful is the man who pushes past that realm of pain and gets to that point where in reality and in experience you have enthroned jesus above any and everything there is nothing god will not give you believe me when i tell you this i've shared with you my experience where god told me son if you will let men see me there is nothing i will not give you please help them if you will let men see me there is nothing i will not give you there is nothing there is no one who compares with you i take pleasure when i worship you i take pleasure in worshiping i take pleasure hear me there are many of you looking at me right now you are only in church because of the need that brought you you are only in church because of something driving you one altar from your village pursued you and you ran to the house of god that is important you are welcome but can i tell you you must get to a point with god where you say lord i'm no longer playing games i mean it seriously whether you bless me or not you are still my god whether you prosper me or not you are still my god whether my requests are answered or not you are still my god i'm not playing this church business with you of exchange where i say give me breakthrough for my loyalty you are not a politician everything let it be yours can i tell you this it is a very painful decision but if you make that decision where everything belongs to him your life your reputation your strength your energy 
now you have entered the realm of power now you have entered the realm of favor now you have entered the left the realm of uncommon grace now you have entered the, the realm of wisdom where you become a friend of god it takes death to be a friend of god all these songs people just claim i'm a friend of god do you know what it means to be a friend of god can i hide this from my friend abraham The realm of friendship is the realm of revelation. He comes to you. Believers, hear me. We need to teach the church of the Lord Jesus Christ that God is not all about miracles. That God is not all about breakthroughs and signs and wonders. I'm not saying they are wrong. But let me tell you, if all we keep chasing after prostituting around just miracle breakthrough power result money no you have to move past those realm and get to a point where you say lord you are my everything there's no plan b there is no plan b we die here there is no plan b i'm not just trying to use you so that if something works no for as long as you have options to god forget about gaining mastery forget about seeing his power and his glory man of god if you still have plan b as to who empowers you god will never come to you the sacrifice of total surrender so then death walks in us that life will walk in you don't you think you just stretch your hands at sick people and say be healed and then they are healed god is not a magician don't think you just sit down and say where is my destiny helper come and bless me no after this series we are getting into the series where i'm going to be teaching you on covenants and you will learn i will show you something very powerful that will change your life when you go and meet occultists and these people who walk they don't hear anything like word of mouth i'm going to be loyal i'll be serious and nonsense you are just talking nonsense bring a piece of paper they say nonsense a paper that you can tear is your own blood you bring i hope you know for satan to take you serious you must bring your blood and then they cut they, they will open so you've, you've seen these things in nigerian films and the rest and then they make some incisions and now satan can be sure that you are serious with him what makes you think you just fold your arms and casually emotionally come to god and say god just give me one billion plus anointing for nations i promise i will serve you and you think god is so stupid you say i love you i died for you take it no there is a realm of death where he's the one who brings you alive you no longer live for yourself otherwise you can pray and pray and pray and god cannot trust you it will be a risk to give you that kind of power it will be a risk to give you that kind of pedigree it will be a risk to give you that kind of wealth why am i teaching you this i truly believe with all my heart that we're entering seasons where matthew 25 is about to be replayed in the church you know what matthew 25 is the parable of the talents god is coming like a mighty wind upon believers and he's beginning to trust them with things for nations i tell you this you will start seeing god give gifts to men in spectacular ways you will start seeing god trust men with graces for territories and nations the question is can your death afford you that gift he gave unto one five talents he gave unto one two talents there are prophets that will rise like never before there are apostles that will rise like never before there are businessmen that will rise like never before there are politicians that will rise like never before you will see levels of power that will dumbfound principalities and powers but let me tell you the price is not just fasting the price is not just prayer the price is not just bible study the price is dead all of you must be on that altar for that fire to come
I lay it all down again To hear you say that I'm your friend Help me find a way Bring me back to you Hey Alleluia. By this teaching tonight, God is already answering someone. Why is it that some things look hard? God has seen that there is a measure of death you are unwilling to get into. That is why certain levels of power and knowledge and wisdom may not easily come to you. God has vetted you. That was his, listen, the hand that wrote in the days of the king, king, I think that was Belshazzar also, also. The hand wrote and hear what Daniel interpreted the writing to be. Mene, mene tekel he said you have been weighed. So God weighs men. You have been weighed in a balance. And you have been found wanting. I weighed your motif. I weighed your desire for wanting that business to work. I weighed your motif for wanting the anointing. I weighed your motif for wanting a great vision. I found it wanting. Let me tell you sincerely. There are some things in our lives it's not the devil causing it it is that the level of death we need to submit to to allow that magnitude of blessing we have not yet attained it businessman it does not take god anything to arrange systems that bring you millions and billions i assure you this God of heaven has shown once and again that the cattle on a thousand hills belong to him. But there is a level of death. You know what it means to sit down with hundreds of billions in your account, in cash and assets, and still roll on the ground before God? Go and ask Solomon what happened to him. Go and ask King Solomon. Solomon who saw the manifested presence of God twice. Everything he wanted he had. But he got to a point in his life where the Egyptian women turned him and he forgot the God of heaven. He wrote the book of Ecclesiastes as a backslidden man. Death. Hmm. You are striving for mastery. The Bible says, He that strives for mastery is not crowned, except he strives lawfully. We need to pray and ask God to purge our hearts, vet our tendencies and remove anything that will stop that weight of glory from resting upon us. That is the prayer of the believer in this season. To sit down and say, Lord, you see I'm qualified for this is nonsense. You must cry and tremble before God and say, Lord, I don't even know my tendencies myself. Can I tell you the truth? I don't mean to insult you and I don't want you to feel bad. There are many of you who have been in this city for many years and many decades. You are well-meaning Christians and yet you don't seem to have passed beyond certain doors. I will tell you what is wrong. You have seemed to do everything right. There is something God has seen in your heart that if certain weights of glory rest upon you and that thing has not died, it will end up being a disadvantage. It's like giving a little baby an AK-47 and showing the baby how to shoot. The baby can turn it to himself and shoot and kill itself. Creating me a clean heart, he said. Renew a right spirit. You can have a wrong spirit, not just a demon spirit, a wrong spirit, a wrong motivation. Renew a right spirit within me.
this is only the first law so that when you see the unusual exploits that God is doing through men and women across the globe please do not think it's just luck and do not think it's just impartation there is an altar with blood dripping on it an altar with blood dripping on it an altar with blood dripping on it a token of death my question to you is are you willing to just keep playing Christianity playing nominal Christianity or you are really ready to dive into this this river of seriousness and mastery with God to say Lord I know that the thoughts you think towards me are not thoughts of evil but of good to bring me a future and an expected end I'm ready to burn the bridges behind me as for you I am I am with you forever and for the rest of my life as for me there is no plan B there is nowhere else to go the bridge is born long bond we live here we die here there is no plan B you have plan B and C and D and E and E and F that's why when you say God I give you everything all the other plans say what of us we are here too you must burn everything and say Lord it's all about you remember that our song Jesus no this is for you it's for your glory and your fame it's not about me as if you should do things my way you alone are God and I surrender listen Tonight is not just a teaching. If I just stop on this law alone, it is sufficient for the night because we are going to take our time and pray. And in that prayer, you see, I'm going to leave you and God alone. I'll be doing my own here with my own God. And you are going to have to pray and say, Lord, you are the one who knows the truth of who I am. You are the one who knows the tendencies in my heart. You are the one who knows what is blocking what I see in my visions from happening in my life. There are, there are realms I should have entered now. There are dimensions I would have attained. There are some of you, everything you have seen in your visions, not one of it has come to pass because you are too alive in yourself. It's a risk for God to allow prophecy to manifest in your life. I the Lord search the heart I test the reins or the motif to give to every man Jeremiah 17 please give it to us 9 and 10 9 and 10 we are going to cry a cry in this place it's going to be a cry of repentance a cry of handover a cry of rededication the meeting is still on Tonight will not be fruitful if all we do is just talk about surrender. It's something that must be practical in our hearts. The heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked who can know it. Verse 10. It says, I the Lord, I search the heart. I try the reins or the motive even to give every man according to his ways and according to the fruit of his doings. businessman i tell you you have not handled the wealth of the kingdom yet until you die god can take a man's prayer point and bring to you you see let me tell you this this is the reason why often god will pick people who are nobodies and honor them you know why because of their lowly estate it is easy they are malleable they are not full of themselves they don't they know they don't amount to much in themselves so it's easy for them to give everything and god says i know you can't speak english very well but your yieldedness is what i'm looking for so i can make do with your limitation in english i will still make you an apostle i will still make you a prophet i know that um the way you are there are disadvantages to your life but what i'm looking for is the death and the yieldedness many of us bring our qualifications and everything to God and he says this is not what I'm looking for I know what I'm searching for a vessel that is yielded a vessel that is dead 
a vessel that is yielded a vessel that is dead and he can pour that oil upon you and he can pour that grace upon you look let me tell you it's a spectacular sight to behold when you see a vessel that has been brought like a reed out of fire if you came to church tonight to encounter the god of the bible if you came to church tonight because you are serious with god if you came to church tonight because you truly mean it with jesus if you came to church tonight because you know that the spirituality of your life is what controls everything around your life then it was a good reason to come to church tonight but if you came to church just to sign the register that i'm in church today or you came to church to just escort someone for the fun of it i love you with all my heart but i may tell you it was not a wise reason to be in church i submit to you i will say this and we'll begin to pray people see the things that god is doing in and through my life and most times most people think this thing is just luck or this thing is just about anointing i think it's just an impartation that came it's not it's not true believe me when i tell you it's not all about anointing it's not all about just impartation go behind the scenes and you will find a pool of blood that still drips upon the altar still drips upon the altar still drips upon the altar it is from that that covenant of sacrifice because sacrifice is a covenant psalm 50 and verse 5 gather unto me my saints they that have made a covenant with me by sacrifice hallelujah i've had the privilege of ministering to many people who were involved in occultism or any of these satanic things and i cannot begin to tell you the sacrifices that they make to move them from level to level some of them will tell you they lie down and sleep on graves not in a vision physical graves imagine being in a graveyard only you in the night you are looking for power power for performance or invincibility now you are lying down you want to become an armed robber who can disappear in case they are looking for you and they will give you a strict requirement number one you are fasting day and night there's not like it's not like you are breaking in the night then you are lying down on a grave it doesn't matter what sound you hear you remain there and when they are done with those stringent things after seven days they come out and you just come out carelessly and say i know you can't stand against me let's think well oh let me tell you the truth whether it is through the demonic or through spirituality genuine spirituality sacrifice is a non-negotiable requirement you don't stand up you don't read your bible you are not serious you see someone who day and night he has interacted with spirits physically and he comes to stand and say i will kill you and he say god forbid i won't die you will be surprised our work in this kingdom is based on the covenants your covenant is a voice it can stand to amplify what you represent there are spirits when you speak to they know what they see jesus i know paul i know ask them what they are seeing that makes them count those names the sons of skiva had zeal they went to cast out demons just like that there are many believers who have not satisfied this law and they will go and carry charms and throw it away and say god forbid jesus has died he has won the victory and you find out that people start dying endlessly because they taught something that did not come by sacrifice redemption is real but the administration of mastery in this kingdom subscribes to the law of sacrifice not even jesus evaded it when jesus hung on that cross you thought the father would see him crying and says enough the father left him there till he died and that is the father who is love and the cry of jesus eloi eloi lama sabachthani you thought the father would say no 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 my heart of love if jesus still died there can i tell you the truth just because god is love does not mean you will compromise on the law of sacrifice I respect the body of Christ I don't 
criticize men of God is not it's not in my my office or my call but I can tell you be careful what you hear this is why there is a lot of powerlessness in the body of Christ we just get up with arbitrary things that cannot stand the test of time in the midst of the darkness and the evil that is in our world can I tell you the very altars that fight many families was initiated by sacrifice and when we talk of sacrifice we are not talking money because most of the church has reduced sacrifice to money so the moment you say sacrifice people just think offering and they think if i give one million that sacrifice the sacrifice is you not just the money no amount of money will replace you that you go back and you say lord it is not a difficult thing for you to change my story and grant me mastery it is not a difficult thing for you to lift me something must be the limitation and i share with you just one law for tonight death death the sacrifice of total complete surrender can you empty your account if he asks you to <laughs> hmm. can you pack all of your clothes can you give up your cars can you give up your houses if he asks you to i'm not saying you should do it you see now all that emotional prayer now has been wiped away by what i'm saying because these are real things you are emo these are the strings that stop you from moving forward pilots will tell you that the lighter a plane is the easier and faster it can fly is that true the heavier a plane is in fact there are times that based on the size of the plane they can reduce the luggage down so that it does not affect it at flight seeing then that we are surrounded by this so great a cloud of witnesses it says let us lay aside every weight and the sin that doth easily beset us and to run with perseverance the race that is set before us looking unto jesus the author and the finisher of our faith hear this who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross is it in your bible who endured the cross and despised the shame there is endurance when it has to do with being a master and a giant you watch these olympians and you see what they do watch these boxers the world champion in everything sometimes you see them in the morning in a country that has ice and snow and you see them walking out they are sweating but they are walking out with awards in their house yet they are walking out and you are asking what else are you looking for that is what it takes to remain there can I tell you, whatever brings you to the place of grace is what will maintain. You will even need greater weights of it. You see all these boxers, boxing all these things around. And you are saying, these guys, don't you go and relax and do this. I like to watch champions in action. It inspires me. When you watch a master communicator, maybe speaking in an occasion or so and you see how these people they, they use english and i mean dominion over words they can capture your attention with uncanny mastery go and check what they do that led to that result you will go to their homes and see videos and dictionaries they go back to school again and learn english in their homes abcs and train themselves with discipline while others are sleeping go and ask the chef what makes him so exceptional that one meal one meal can be as much as a thousand dollars one plate what is in the plate find out respectfully speaking even our dear politicians whether you win or lose you are going to go through the labor of going around publicizing and doing all of these things that is some serious effort there go and ask some of the wealthiest ceos around the world you will see them in office over time even when those they have employed have gone home some of them will be there they may sleep in the office sacrifice it is only when it comes to the body of christ that we just believe that because jesus has done everything we just throw it away and just assume that it's at work in my life but you see that the results don't show dear people of god it's why the church remains powerless 
is why the church remains and for many people all we know about sacrifice is praying and fasting and study of the bible so the moment i'm praying the moment i'm fasting the moment i'm studying scripture i just believe that i'm going through the sacrifice for greatness not so believe me there is something beyond prayer fasting bible study it is you being the living sacrifice upon that altar lord i have lost the ability to tell you no what you desire is my desire if you tell me go left left i go if you tell me go right right i go whatever you tell me that is it for me if you tell me leave ministry that is it if you say go back to ministry that is it have you gotten to that point believe me if you get to that point you will see something about god god will brand his hand upon your life in a way that will cause your world to marvel this teaching tonight is leaving you with two options one to continue doing christianity the way you are used to doing it or to say i take god seriously from this teaching tonight i may not know all it takes but this one law that i've found i have heard for some of you for the first time others a reiteration i'm going to subscribe let nothing and no one be so great in my life that it takes the place of god if that becomes your prayer and you mean it with all your heart you will count testimonies like the sons of the seashore because your life you things you prayed for and the ones you did not pray for you become a friend of god let's pray don't forget what i have told you that in this season i discern very strongly that the giver of all good things is coming to his body again and there will be strange distribution of new things god is going to come to believers there are people who will be enthroned at higher levels a thousand cubits is about to be measured over many believers and some will shift into deeper levels of power some will shift into deeper levels of influence some will shift into deeper levels of wealth make sure you subscribe for what god is doing through sacrifice so that you don't become part of those pointing fingers at people and saying don't mind them it's like they are just lucky or no 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 you must make up your mind is someone ready to pray I give you two three minutes alone with god before we do a general prayer please no distraction let's respect what god is doing i want you to cry before the god of your salvation lord purge my heart purge my heart bring me to a point of total surrender may nothing be too much to give you may nothing be too much to hand over to you you gave me everything the grace to give you everything all our viewers make sure you are praying crying to the god of heaven who are striving for mastery and in addition to understanding the ministry of prayer and its capacity to build the believer we must understand death death to your ego death to your reputation especially make sure you pray lord this my ego this my reputation take it out of the way i desire to serve you acceptably my passion for titles my passion for name my passion for this and that take it out of my life i want to see you exalted that is all i desire jesus exalted jesus enthroned enthroned him beyond your business enthroned him beyond koinonia enthroned him beyond joshua selman Lord, we exalt you, we enthrone you. Purge our hearts, purge our hearts, purge our hearts, purge our hearts. Grant us the grace. Let nothing, let no one, let no lifting be able to take your place in our lives. That which you want is what we also want. Go ahead and pray. Speak to him. You're contending for power with God. 
Lord, I love the ministry, but I exalt you above it. I love the business, but I exalt you above it. I love my wife, my husband, my children, but I exalt you above them. I love the visions you are giving me, but I exalt you above them. One more minute. You are praying to the God of heaven. The one secret behind the strange liftings of men. The one secret of the kingdom. Behind the mighty and the marvelous hand of God. Over the life of an individual. You will see God arise for you in ways that will surprise you. He will give you even the desire of nations because you would have become his friend hiding no secret from you opening you to deep truths in the spirit empowering you in unusual dimensions wisdom beyond the realm of men hallelujah 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 listen when the lord began to speak to me about the thing he's doing in the body of christ in this season how that he's distributing newer and greater levels of grace god is trusting people with wealth you have never seen see let me tell you this this is not going to be about business alone i understand principles of value but this one is god trusting people seeing that i my last treasurer betrayed me that i'm still looking for more and now you are saying lord i will be a faithful steward and god will give you what is equivalent to the wealth of nations there are levels of anointings that will make men will walk like gods upon the earth it is true that their words become like the word of god spectacular manifestations of his power that you look at them you know that this is a man backed by a strange altar with blood dripping on it that we will stop being storytellers in the body of christ and indeed we will be proof producers even by the spirit the secret beyond fasting beyond prayer is death there is nothing in my life today i submit to you by the grace of god that I cannot give God there is nothing in my life today that I cannot drop at the altar nothing the worst that can happen to me in this life is that I die and even in death we have cheated it already in victory please everyone in one more minute before I pray for you I want you to rededicate your life again I'm not insulting you. I know your spiritual experience, but rededicate your life afresh. Don't say I'm not a sinner. I'm not rededicate your life. Lord, I hand it is a handover service again. Rate bali kata zige de bela haski anda bragatus katia impreke shabarakus kadila barante kapriata hasia. I rededicate my life. I rededicate my life. I rededicate my heart. Everything. One more minute. Just, just pour your. I rededicate everything. For some of you, you are even saying, Lord, let's start afresh again. I don't know the name of what I've been doing, but I can, I can, I can be sure by this message that I've not been serious. Lord, I'm willing to start afresh again. It's better to start afresh than to keep roaming around in pride and ignorance. I can start afresh. We're wrapping up. That's why you came to church. Rededicate yourself.
hallelujah now listen to me let me tell you this i don't mean to insult you but the way many of us live our lives it is proof that we do not yet acknowledge the authority of jesus over our lives we are the masters of our own will you do anything you want to do now he that strives for mastery is temperate in all things are we together you cannot live your life anyhow anything that just comes into your mind you do it no it's not done that way and i know when you speak like this most people feel oh this is a liberal society where well you can choose to believe what you want to believe but i am telling you if it is the god of the bible you want to walk with it says the love of god constrains us Are we together so don't don't try to modernize christianity don't try to modernize i've told you i'm both new and old school it depends on what you are calling old and what you are calling new nobody leaves what works this is a word of caution because thank god for westernization thank god for technology but many of us have become victims of these things there is an an unusual lust for comfort and lawlessness and liberty that is there is no constraint anything goes it's a social world i tell you you will not do business with god that way i don't insult your pedigree the choice is yours but if it is the god of heaven you must be prepared to go back and say lord i am ready to subscribe to the constraint that brings mastery even in the secular those who are champions are constrained there are many things they want to do but they are not given the liberty to by reason of what they seek who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross be careful many of us are jumping into all kinds of things no restraint no constraint no nothing you don't care after all i'm just a christian after all this one will happen i don't study my bible i don't care i don't pray i don't care no nothing oh i'm a christian i just come to church no sir no sir all those who have written history that we are uh, we, we we are benefited from them today go and find out the price that they paid i'm speaking to us one more minute before we pray i have to tell you this because most believers you don't like hearing what i'm saying but i love you most times when you say things like this believers become offended because they feel you just preach and leave me to live my life anyhow i promise you by god whether it's god or satan you are serving you live your life anyhow you will not go far with any of them constrain is related to mastery you must be able to constrain yourself can you pray that one prayer lord grant me the grace that i will be able to constrain my life for the sake of the place you are taking me to relationships you need to cut away from people you need to cut away from things you need to cut away from he that strives for mastery is not crowned unless he strives lawfully Le leviticus chapter 9 and verse 6 says this is the thing that the lord command that you should do and the glory of the lord shall appear to you whether you are lying down kneeling let me just speak over your life you don't have to lift your hands just believe and take it by faith in the name of jesus christ i pray and i declare over your life the power to lay it down i decree and declare may that grace be imparted upon you now the power to lay down not just your finances to lay down your ego to lay down your intellect to enthrone christ above anything and everyone in your life may that grace rest upon you now in the name of jesus christ and I pray for you there are many of you who by prophecy 
you are supposed to have entered certain realms realms of mastery realms of prosperity realms of advancement but simply because you have not subscribed to this sacrifice of total surrender you have not given god a chance to move you by reason of your surrender tonight may god speedily bring you into those realms in the name of jesus christ anyone and anything in your life that will not allow you to surrender wholly to god i take them out of your life in the name of jesus christ and i pray for you whoever has laughed at you based on your sacrifice and your dedication towards god in the name of jesus help them please i pray by the power that raised christ from the dead may god use the strange results he will bring upon your life to answer them back <laughs> hallelujah please let me encourage you as you go back home go and edit the things you listen to go and edit the things in your house don't say it does not matter for God's sake. You must culture yourself and trust God for grace to give you a new beginning. Let me make the altar call. Our time is fast spent. There's no need cajoling you after a cry and a prayer for sacrifice. You are saying, Apostle, this message tonight is for me. I have violated the first law. I cannot say for sure I have surrendered everything. I may be inside i may be outside across the balcony but i want you to give me a chance with jesus some of you may be saying i want to rededicate my life to jesus christ wherever you are i'm going to count one to five please let's minimize movement and allow those who need to come out to come out we're wrapping up already wherever you are make sure you don't sit back nobody will force you but this is a decision between you and jesus young and old rich or poor male or female i begin my counting one to five run to the front like there's fire on the mountain one koinonia let's celebrate them as they come come to jesus come to jesus give him a chance to have a new beginning with your life if you're coming please hurry up run to jesus Two, seeing then that we are surrounded by so the Lord bless you in Jesus name let your weak beginning be a profitable one in Jesus name may the mighty and marvelous hand of God rest upon you I declare upon you that the lines have fallen for you in pleasant places you go from glory to glory your life becomes a representation of the grace and the power of God in Jesus name i pray let's share the grace together in fellowship the grace of our lord jesus christ the love of god the sweet fellowship of the holy spirit rest and abide with us now and forever amen god bless you and see you on sunday take over jehovah I have come to the end of myself. Take over, Jehovah. I have come to the end of myself. Hallelujah, hallelujah. I have come to the end of myself.